Uh, we thought that this sounded good because of the fact that it, it integrated both auditory processing. We saw all of the kids, almost every one of the kids that we work with here at our school that have autism spectrum disorders um, have really broken sensory and, uh, and auditory processing, uh, uh, you know, difficulties. The, their systems are not integrated. Uh, and motorically, they're not integrated. So this appealed to us because we wanted something that worked both both ends. We thought if you had a uh, a system that uh, that did two things at once, that was fixing both auditory integration at the same time as fixing motor integration, it could probably have the best value, best bang for the buck. Looking into ILS, many of the motor activities you guys incorporate into the program, I'm already using in therapy. So brain gym, things of that nature. I really liked it from the motor standpoint. Um, the auditory processing piece here in the schools, I really don't have a tool to help kids with that. And as Paul said, we have so many students that really struggle with that. So to see the movement activities integrated with a tool that I really needed, I just felt it was a good match. And as he had mentioned too, the research supporting it was, it was encouraging. Um, so we'll go ahead and bring the boys in. They kind of know their routine. They have a seat over in the blue chairs. I call them up one by one, get them set up with the systems. They have a seat until all their friends have the units on. Um, after that, they take their little place on one of the little hearts here. Uh, we go through three or four of the activities together as a small group. Um, it, not all of it's pretty. We just started with set six, so they're still kind of getting acclimated to, to some of the movements. Um, after that, I, I break down and work one-on-one -on -one with them, so we'll have uh, one boy on the swing, another one over at the table. Okay, how many are we going to do? Let's go for, let's do 20. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Kicking across your body. There's one, two, two. I know my name is Paulson. Good. Four. I didn't happen. Five. This was hard for you, wasn't Three. it? This is my, this is my, make my Three. arms breaking. Nine. It's on your hips. Eleven. Exercise. Twelve. Can you cross your body 14. a little more, Jagger? Fourteen. Look. Thirteen. That's okay. Sixteen. For the three students that I see, we are at session 21. Uh, we do a half an hour, once a day, five days a week. Um, the kids love it when I go to pick them up for it. If I miss a day because of an IEP meeting, they're asking Where's Ms. Tollison? Why am I not doing this? So they come willingly, they enjoy participating, and motorically I'm seeing a huge difference with the kids that I'm, I'm working with. I have um, one of the kiddos in particular that jumping jacks, I mean something as simple as catching a ball we've been working on for two years and we've pretty much gotten you know limited results with what we're doing in therapy and they're doing that now so to see just the improvements that they're making from a motor standpoint is huge, in my opinion, because they're able to have better control of their bodies, they're able to sit and attend better in class, and that's our goal. I mean, that's that's what we want for them, so. I'm even seeing when I walk in uh, to these the students, because they, they know me from, from having uh, been evaluating them before, and uh, but they, they, they're they even showing, I think, some better kind of just social uh, social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll say something totally socially appropriate and it'll, yeah. it'll uh, take me back. Well, and two kiddos in particular that we're going to see this morning, um, very scripted speech, typically. And as Paul said, they'll come up and, how are you doing today? Or just, <laughs> I had such and such for breakfast. It's just, it's pertinent stuff that... Yeah we're not used to seeing from mm -hmm. two kiddos in particular. Yeah. A lot of these kids, if you look back in their histories, had um, at earlier times had a lot of uh, meltdowns, had a lot of uh, uh, stuff that um, they couldn't cope with. Right. And uh, when they when they couldn't cope with, they, they would typically uh, become uh, just frantic and irate and clear room. <laughs> clear room. We, yeah, we do have one student in particular that last year we try everything within our power and the school system. You, you don't restrain. There's no putting hands on kids until they're to the point where 
they're a danger to themselves or to other students. And one kiddo in particular last year, um, we did have to have a restraint on, and this year, knock on wood, so far, things, uh, it's just a totally different child. We had his IEP on Monday, and his mom had shared that swinging, he's kind of a groundbound child, he doesn't swing on the playground, he doesn't have his feet off the ground, he's not climbing on slides, any of that. Um, this is new. We got the swing last year, and Remy refused to crawl up on there. I've been working with Jelaine and Paul on the program since they started. I'm actually just the fill-in person, so if they're absent or they're not doing it, then I come in and I fill in. Um, but it's, it's interesting not to be the person to do it every day because I think I see the growth a little bit more because I, I'm out of it and then I'm in it and I'm out of it. So um, when I pulled the kids in the very beginning, um, they were very uncoordinated with the moves, um, lacked that motivation of continuing when they got frustrated with it. Um, and I recently just filled in for Ms. Tollison, and um, it was amazing to see the moves that the kids were able to do, um, especially the one where you bounce the ball against the wall. <laughs> because I spent more time chasing the ball with them, um, they actually got to catch it, and they were really interested in doing the activities. When we talk about doing ABA and discrete trials and those kids sitting down and, and really getting into there, if you've got a child who is sensory overloaded and can't stop enough to, for you to even finish your sessions, you're kind of dead in the water. So for me to stop and integrate some of those sensory pieces in there, it's no big deal. Like we do it on a daily basis. That's what we do. If you need to jump or you need to bounce or you need to sit on this or you need to use this pencil or it needs to be weighted, we do all those things. We incorporate those things because, again, until you can get that child focused on what you need them to do and what that object of completion is, you're not going to get anything from them. So, yeah, we incorporate sensory on a daily basis. Our kids in our units have the most difficulty in lunch, specials, that PE, that PE time when they're under the aud the auditorium, the camp, the canopy piece, um, and most of that is due to not being able to filter out all those auditory pieces. So Last year, we had an incident with Jesse where he was just so dysregulated, and he was having such a day that he was bouncing from desk to desk to desk, and it came to the point where he was a danger to himself and to the other students. So um, in that particular circumstance, we had our trained people had to do a physical restraint on him just for his own safety. So to see um, that behavior last year compared with, you know, he comes in, he sits in his chair, and he can wait and attend and listen for directions. He's participating in class night and day. I mean, it's just he's a totally different kiddo. 22, 24, 20, 20. Eight, we have side by side play and he actually um, we were working on greetings with him and he is now greeting and it's been a huge change. The whole body has to be ready to learn and has to be ready to produce before we're going to get any further. So if our children are sensory overloaded, regardless of the cause, I'm not, I don't, I know function is important, but regardless of the cause, until we get that child's body regulated and they're ready and open, we're not going to go any further. So this program hits that in a very structured way. I wish I last will last one hour. I wish I will last three hours. Why? Because it's so fun. It's cool. Miss Tollison's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>